need of capital available to invest in our potential. On finance and capital, at the Paris Agreement, as well as earlier in Copenhagen in 2009, it had been agreed that developed countries would make available US dollars 100 billion every year for developing countries. Disappointingly, as expected, the amount has never materialized. As a result, this figure has become increasingly contentious and divisive in every other conference. By contrast, I invite you to consider the Global Finance Alliance for Net Zero which was launched in COP26 in Glasgow. The alliance unites nearly 600 financial institutions. And I'm told there is a good gentleman who has made a presentation to us from the European Union. The alliance unites nearly 600 financial institutions who have jointly invested US dollars 4 billion in energy transition towards net zero, an amount that African investment opportunities we've hardly had tapped into. This variety of capital that is out in search of green investment opportunities is tapping into a rapidly growing global demand. Other regions appreciate this opportunity and are charging ahead. For example, the United States Inflation Reduction Act provides nearly 370 billion in tax incentives and government spending towards clean energy and climate technology. The EU has made US dollars 1 trillion available for the European Green Deal over and above new trade rules under the carbon border adjustment mechanism that make importers pay for the embedded carbon in their products. The planet simply cannot afford to channel a paltry 0.6% of renewable investment in Africa at a time when the continent is home to over 40% of the planet's best renewable energy resources. Our statistics on sustainability, efficiency, and green compliance are outstanding. I mentioned earlier that we can create energy access for all by 2030 while reducing total emissions related to energy generation by at least 80% and emissions per megawatt hour by well over 90% with only 30% investment. However, it entails a 40% higher upfront investment than the current policy pathway. If Africa is to be the green industrial powerhouse of the world, and there is no foreseeable alternative, much more investment has to be made available collectively by humanity. This position aligns very closely with the ongoing discussion in Bridgetown Initiative, which I am sure many of you are aware, whose principles, achievements, and aspirations we must applaud, a decision in line with the Bridgetown core for action to channel a greater proportion of global finance to emerging and frontier economies and link it closely with climate action would make necessary concessional capital available to de-risk and attract private investment. This is pre precisely the outcome that decades of economic distress and underdevelopment of the global south deserves and must have. Moreover, as the global financial reform movement considers debt restructuring, the sustainability of debt relief is a major shared concern. Many of the countries in debt distress benefited from debt relief according to the highly indebted Boer countries in the 90s. It is clear, therefore, that debt relief did not automatically usher in significant economic growth. In fact, it didn't achieve much. To liberate economies from this vicious circle, 
positive growth that is sensitive to climate and biodiversity.